Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being on my channel where we are talking about the multi-dimensional approach to rapidly and radically healing and transforming during and after narcissistic abuse. Now, this video is about <laughs> the one thing the narcissist will never do. Any guesses? Well, I mean, there's lots of things they'll never do, but like, let's, um, one thing that they'll never do is grow or change. Now, do you remember, if you, if you watched me for a while, in the earlier videos, I said that they literally, they're like a virus and they implant subconscious beliefs in you, right? Because what you don't consciously reject and not consent to, your subconscious accepts, including the belief systems that they need you to have in order to stay and actually <laughs> believe things about yourself. Now, once two of those programs that you are now infected with is the constant ruminating of, is this a narcissist and will this person change? They implant that in your subconscious. So you stu you're stuck in that question of wondering, is it a narcissist, will they change? If you're thinking this, chances are they probably are. If you're here, they probably are. And no, they don't change and they don't grow. They will do everything not to grow. There's one thing that they do do, which is get better at what they do especially the more they know you because they've got more data. They've got more information. They know how to play you better. They get better at it. They get better at knowing your triggers. They get better at knowing how to hurt you. They get better at being deceitful. And they're already breaking you down. So they've normalized things that you would never have accepted if there had been a contract and you'd have been signed up to the agreement. You'd never have said, I accept this. They sold you a complete lie but while we're in it, we're consenting to it. They do not grow. They're not growth orientated. They'll tell you they are. Yeah? My ex-partner told me he did. I had a client in my business. I did lots of work for her. She stole my ideas, didn't pay for them. She's the victim. Um, so she wanted to grow, wanted to <laughs> use things. No, she just wanted theft. Stealing. Stealing. It's different. It's difficult sometimes to tell, is it a narcissist? With this client, she claimed her ex-partner was a narcissist. It, uh, she was a very convincing person. But, I mean, he's the one that's ended up without his family, completely penniless and mentally ill. She's the one that carries on using and abusing people, you see. So often the victims look crazy. People will exploit people in different ways. Everything that the nar I know in their situation, she convinced him to give up the job, do what she wanted, help her with things, all those kind of things. And then he looks like, you know, the loser. Because all his life became about was supporting her and what she wanted to do. And when things weren't working out in her life, guess what? She blamed him. This is a narcissist. The people they leave behind look shattered. What they will never do is look at themselves, acknowledge the truth, they'll continue to lie, they'll continue to steal, and they'll fight it, yeah? They'll fight it. Even if you have a contract, <laughs> you know, in business, this is what I found, even with a contract, they'll try and gaslight you, get away from the point of the fact that they want to steal and exploit. And they think that they can divert the details, which is gaslighting, right? So even with a contract, you're going to be pushed into things you haven't consented to. And they'll often have a new supply. So in this instance, of course, the next person is there, hooked in. They're going to really, the new supply or whatever flying monkey they've got is going to fight for them as if they're the victim. Because they've got the violin out, the narcissist, giving the sob story of how, how I mean, how they tell their stories, who knows? But they get the, they know how to emotionally project and manipulate. So they get the new, I mean, I've been there with narcissists when I, before I knew all of this, where I felt like defending them because they know how to trigger your emotions. I knew a guy out here and I wanted to defend him to start with. And then I was like, ha ha, this is not right. This man's off. Um, but like he got other spiritual people to defend him. I think I spoke about that before. Like a friend of mine, she was a Reiki master as well. She had her own business, successful girl, spiritual woman. But I mean, she was like, he's just like my brother and I don't want anyone exploiting him. He was exploiting so many people, especially women. But like, you know, the emotion that he 
And he didn't even know, you know, the girl that I was friends with that, you know, viewed him like a brother, but they didn't know each other. That was so fascinating to me because he knew how to, how to, like they know how to psychically appeal to the right emotion that's going to trigger something in you and make people often want to protect them, but they're not the victim. While they leave a trail of destruction. The, the, the sad thing about the new supply is, <laughs> unfortunately, some of these people are going to end up, if they'd looked at the history, in the same way. But narcissists will twist everything in the truth. You know, when they detonate your life, well, they'll try and pretend that's your karma. Their karma's coming from them, for them the minute you detach. Whether they honour their contracts or not, but we have to fully detach and know the truth. Truth is the strongest vibration in the universe, right? And when you won't sway from the truth, there's a different power in you. But knowing the truth as empaths, as empathetic humans, is hard because we doubt ourselves so much. You know, we're the, <laughs> the opposite of the narcissist. The narcissist doesn't doubt themselves. They lie and they stand by their lie, like, fiercely. And we always want to pacify and be fair and all that kind of stuff, right? So I'm asking really for you to be true. Don't, especially with a manipulator or a narcissist, you're not looking to do what you project as fair. You've got to stand by very, very factual truths, especially if you're going through a divorce or something like that. I do have one-on-one -on -one spaces if you need some extra help with dealing with certain things, right, with these kind of uh, people. But um, you really... You've got to get very factual and stick with the truth. Very strong vibration that you can't be budged on because they will bend the truth, appeal to your emotions in every way. They do not even care about the truth. They care about getting their way. We tend to care about harmony, being fair. With every, and this is what I don't want you to shut this down or uh, any of us. We don't want to shut down those things with every other human on the planet. That is such a wonderful quality. With a narcissist and a manipulator, you can't afford to play like that because they are never going to play like that. And in fact, all they work in is injustice. All they care about is exploitation, theft and destruction. And their next flying monkeys and <laughs> supply is going to fiercely fight for them. Believe all their lies, villainize you. This is the way it goes. Smear campaigns, what happens? Oh yeah, they've stolen from you, they've ruined your life. There's a whole history of things behind them that they've just literally moved away from, thrown people in the trash after they've destroyed their lives unfairly. No responsibility, no accountability because the one thing they'll not do, one of the things, is not grow, not grow and not change. You see, in order to do personal development, and evolve, we have to look at ourselves deeply. We have to look at the truth of everything about us, right? We can only grow when we're prepared to look. Face things that we don't want to face, yeah? Part of this journey of being with narcissists, part of what is very hard for us, was very hard for me, was to really sit with how bad this was, how terrible this was, how I was allowing something absolutely intolerable to be tolerated, that I, by my only survival mechanism sometimes, I, I spoke before about I couldn't even admit my parents were abusers until I got into my 30s, because as a little girl, it was a truth I couldn't handle. I wouldn't have survived with that truth. I couldn't. It was too much for my system. But in order to really develop and grow, I had to face the truth. Now, if we're willing to do that, then we've got the potential to really exponentially change our lives because we're willing to set new standards and really have to process the traumas and the pain of what we've been through and what it really is, which is really, I mean, if you read some of the stories on here, I know some of my stories, some of them I won't share because I don't traumatise people you know, on purpose, I, I share what I can for the highest good. I, I feel about when I do things, I'm, I'm always in the intention of for me and the highest good for all. What's in that, right? So I share from that context without details and I'm not in any way trying to trauma bond anyone, but I must share enough, you know, in a way that can help you heal and transform and dissolve the shames around it, right? So, but I mean acknowledging some of the things that have gone on, devastating, painful. None of us want to look at that. 
it's not that, and again, if you come into sovereign, my way of dissolving trauma does not re-traumatise you. It's like, it's like a, someone said to me, it's like an energetic surgery. It's like, yeah, I know it happened, but it feels like someone else. And it's like, you just take it out. That's what we do in the energy work. You do not have to think it through and then reignite all the emotions. I energetically clear it. Please come into sovereign if you can. It's so powerful. But like, we have to face the truth of how bad it is right? We have to literally drop the lie. And the subconscious virus they've put in your brain, is this a narcissist? Probably if you're here, yes. Will this person change? Absolutely not. When I talk about what it would take for them to change, to become so attached, this would be a huge process. Huge. Like the amount of dark night of the soul they'd need to go through. Because they'd have to face everything they've done, you see. That would be a huge emotional journey that would require a lot of support and healing through, and they, they wouldn't come out of it in five minutes. I mean, people that think that they've transformed because they seem happy with a new supply, it's just playing the same record again. So for most of them, it could take years and years and years, a, a, you know, a long, long portion of their life to start looking at and evolving through that. And they'd have to want to choose it, right? which isn't impossible, but you're not going to, that's what I mean, it's not going to be you that's going to probably be on the other side of it. They're not even going to, if they went through that transition, they would come back a different person because the person you thought they were, like I said in the, in the last video about did they ever love you, isn't who they are. They're a projection of what they knew that, that psychically you needed them to be to be wildly in love with that person enough for them to hook you in the love bomb. They don't exist in the way that you think they do, in the love bomb, in the illusion, which means that when, if they did go through a dark night of the soul, when they come out, they wouldn't be anything like the person that you were connected to in the illusion, you see. You probably wouldn't even like that person or connect to them because it wasn't a connection based on truth. It was a connection based on an illusion they projected to you, right? So, no. They can't change. One thing they are is predictable. The cycle is predictable. Love bomb, hoover, <laughs> devalue, discard. Let's go again. But it gets worse every time because they get better at it. They're predictable. They never learn their lesson. They know the pain they're causing. I need you to understand that. They know what they're doing. Sometimes we think, oh, we don't really realise what pain they're causing. Oh, they absolutely know it's their intention. It's intentional. It's intentional. This is what's so disgusting about it. One of the, I'll tell you something, that when I was really healing, I, I've done so much work on this, as you can tell, and help people with it. But like, one of the things that was, I became aware of, it, deep, deep, deep in my subconscious was, I was holding on to the pain of my dad. I, I was holding on to the trauma. I was like, why won't I let this go? Partly because I, I think on a very subconscious level, I felt like if I let it go, it, it was like it didn't happen. That I was, see, letting go is very hard for us sometimes. And I was honestly, subconsciously, it wasn't a conscious thing that I was thinking, again, I help people with this work because we don't know what's going on in our subconscious. That's why it's subconscious. It's beneath the surface of our conscious. But... I realised that part of the reason I wouldn't let it go, the trauma, was because it was almost like letting him off the hook. That if I wasn't damaged emotionally or mentally, if I just went on to my best life, then it looked like it didn't happen. Some of us have got this subconscious programme too. Right? I can help you release that. Sovereign will do it. Um, my private work with you will do it. I've, I have single sessions available now. Um, again, so... But some of our subconscious stuff is tricky. It's not logical to our immediate mind. It's how people say, oh, I'd love to be rich, but subconsciously you resist in it, right? We, we don't know what is our subconscious sometimes. And sometimes we've got attachments because there's something deeper underneath that I can really channel and help you with that if you want a single session or, or a, some private coaching on it. Uh, but that was a very fascinating one to me. <laughs> Why deeper, deeper, deeper than me wanting to be healed was the... It's not that I wanted him to pay. It was like, I, it was something very deep in me that I think it felt like it didn't matter what he did if I had completely healed from it. It was like, it didn't matter what he did. There was no proof or evidence or consequence. I don't know. There was something in it that was like, it was stopping me letting it fully go. Because I wasn't, 
I, I needed my reality to be acknowledged to at least me. So, you know, now I always talk about I never deny my reality. I never deny what happened to me. And I never deny how I feel anymore. Because doing that helps us really be at peace with things differently, accept things differently, and um, not hang on to our trauma. Yeah? Just because I'm not traumatized anymore doesn't mean it didn't matter. It did. I just chose to let it go. All right, my loves, lots of love. Um, please keep commenting, liking, and subscribing. Thank you for being here, and I'll speak to you soon.